Welcome to Growth Marketers Podcast. I'm Solomon Timothy. And I am Taylor Rowe. Uh, today, we're, we're back with another at-home COVID edition of uh, the Growth Marketers Podcast. Uh, as you can see, if you're watching this, I'm rocking my uh, ClickX t-shirt, which is right. a technology that, that we've created here at 1IMS. Um, today, we, we got into a, a pretty specific topic about a question that we get all the time, right, is if you're investing into SEO, uh, and into Google Ads, um, there's going to be a, a point in time, if you're doing it correctly, that uh, you accomplish your goal from a search standpoint and you get to the ranking of number one or number two for your main you know, money keywords, right? So the question is always at that point, um, one, do I stop doing SEO, right? Which is a, another topic. And two, can I stop spending money on Google Ads because I rank number one for the search term, so now I don't need to pay for it, right? Let's just focus on organic search. So in this podcast, we we dove into that idea of um, should you stop spending money on, on Google Ads if you're ranking really well for your keywords uh, in organic search? Uh, I got into a, a couple of interesting scenarios and, and topics, so I hope you guys enjoy. All right, Taylor, today's topic is if I'm ranking really well on organic, do I need paid media? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a question that we get all the time, right? Is why do I need, um, you know, why do I need PPC, right? Uh, Google ads. What if I, if I'm already ranking number one for a search term, do I need to be on, on PPC? Um, you know, similarly, people ask, uh, why do I need to bid on my own keyword, right? Or my own brand name? Um, I'm already showing up. People know who we are. They're searching. Why would I need to pay extra for that? Um, so I think uh, there's a couple of things you want to look at in, in determining, you know, do you need to invest in both SEO and PPC, right? That's really what we're talking about. So let's assume um, you rank number one or number two top couple positions for the, the main keyword that you're trying to rank for. Uh, and then you are wondering, do I need to continue to pay hundreds or maybe even thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for this particular search term? Um, I think it's different for everyone, depending on who you are, what you do, what your industry is. Um, probably the industry and level of competition is is the biggest factor here. Uh, so it's hard to give a blanket sort of uh, piece of advice. Um, but overall, what we've seen the data support is that, uh, I guess to put it simply, the people who click on organic click sure. on organic results, right? And the people who click on paid results, click on paid results. Um, there's not a lot of data to show that people um, maybe sometimes click on organic results and sometimes click on paid results. So what that means for your business is it's not either or, right? Where you're, you know, if, well, if I just don't pay for it, they'll scroll down and click on organic. It's a completely different audience. It, it's almost like if you're on Google and you're on Bing right? It's like two different audiences that are searching or two different search engines. So um, it's, you, you're not going to get the same, you're just not going to get the same amount of traffic because someone's going to click on those ads, right? right. Uh, the other thing that you want to look at is the level of competition. So if you're in a very competitive space and you stop paying for search terms because you are ranking organically very well, then that just leaves the door open for a competitor to take that spot and get those clicks, right? If it's 15% or 30% of the clicks go to the ads, or maybe even 60% of the clicks go to the ads. If you're, you were consistently paying to be number one, that 30%, that 60%, whatever that is, is going to go to a competitor rather than go to you, right? So it's very simple when you look at the math of it, that it's, it's uh, you know, you have the whole piece of the pie and there's a percentage of the clicks that go to organic results and there's a percentage of the clicks that go to paid. So if it's still financially profitable for you, depending on your business model, to get the traffic through paid, uh, I don't think paid is anything that you should ever completely remove right. simply for the fact that we're ranking organic, right? If it's a different conversation, that's a different conversation. But if we're just purely looking at the idea of if I rank number one for organic search, do I need to continue to pay for paid search? Um, that's not the reason to stop paying for paid search, right? And then one other thing I wanted to bring up, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, of course, man. Um, is the idea of uh, impression share, market share, brand awareness, however you want to look at it. The reality is that Google search 
results algorithms are changing multiple times a day. Not even you can't even say that the results are you know changing daily. Multiple times a day, there are small updates. There are changes to the SERP results. Um, I was just noticing and chatting with one of our uh, other SEO guys earlier today that there are now multiple results within the featured snippet. Right. Hmm. Uh, all of a sudden, there was this idea of position zero, right, which is the featured snippet. It's, you know, I want to be before even the first result. Now Google is offering multiple drop downs and click throughs that actually filter the featured snippet without changing the search. So there's, I believe the searches that I was seeing, there's about six or seven pages, different website pages that are showing up in a featured snippet. So you can't rely in completely on the fact that you're showing up in organic results because things are changing. The other thing is that because Google, again, has to make money, they are continuing to push those organic results down and looking at different ways for them to make money on the paid. So if you're on a mobile device, for example, the majority of the searches that you're going to look for, uh, everything what we call before the scroll, right? Um, So before you start to scroll down, is pretty much paid listings, paid ads. So worst case scenario is you rank for number one organic, you're maybe in the maps, uh, number one organic, and you're um, in the number one paid slot for paid advertising, right? So now what you're talking about is, let's say there's 10 organic results, three results on the map, and then you know four ads. Now we're talking about 17 positions on the first page, and you have the ability to take up three of them. So the question is, when you're looking at that, again, do I want to remove myself from the paid ads because I'm already getting the traffic organically? Um, the question is, can you afford to let your com- competition possibly get that traffic and get that customer? So I would say at face value, um, just because you rank number one is really never an I- a reason alone uh, to stop spending money on paid. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to reduce your budget or not to spend as much money on paid ads. Uh, but simply because you already rank at the top of the search results is not one of them. Yeah, and again, if you if you're happy with the number of leads you're getting, you know what I mean. That's you know you can yeah. say, yeah, I can't handle more leads. However, you as you said, the the organic positions are never guaranteed. Yep. Yeah. You can call Google and say, well, I used to be number one. Why why am I on page two? Their right. job is to make sure that you don't stay in any one particular spot. Yeah. you know, for a long period of time, right? So like their quality guideline is a moving target. What's right. quality today is not quality tomorrow. Right. And that means that- Someone's gonna do it better. Yeah, exactly. You don't even know who's working on their SEO right now so, to outrank you. Um, so I guess in my opinion, like the best example is if you search mm-hmm. anything on, on a phone, right? Any topic, the whole first page is all ads. I can't right. see an organic search result without having to scroll. So it just depends on how badly do I really, you know, want to market myself. If I, I'm not going to be seen in organic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, on a mobile search or a desktop search without having to scroll because the whole first page is ads. Yep. And with all the extra, you know what I mean? The additional uh, site links and location extensions and phone extension and extra, you know, ad copy space, you don't have any space for anything. <laughs> yeah. The other thing you have to think about with Google ads specifically is a lot of times because we, I think as digital marketers, we're able to track everything so well and we're able to do it at such a profitable uh, and sustainable model, right? Because, you know, let's just assume you're, um, you know, e-commerce or even B2B and it's a lead gen website, right? Um, if you, it costs you $20 to acquire a new customer and every customer you sell is worth $2,000 to you. Right. It's so black and white that you would continue to invest into that, that now anything that is not that type of return on investment, uh, you kind of shy away from, right? So the reason I bring that up is the idea of, okay, removing myself from the paid listings because I've accomplished my goal of getting the traffic organically. Um, the real question you should ask yourself is too, can I afford to let someone else acquire that customer? Right. Mm-hmm. Because I think people sometimes forget about the, the idea of, you know, controlling the market share. Now, depending on your industry is a little bit different, right? Now our industry, um, you know, 
we do very custom, you know, uh, digital marketing consulting and, uh, you know, actual act, act marketing activities for our clients. Um, we can't take, you know, 90% of the market share, right? I mean, there's so many companies out there that need help with digital marketing. We just need to find companies that are a good fit for us. So for us, you know, another company gaining a new customer, Client. it's not a loss to us, right? Okay. But there are industries where there's five top players, right? Or there's 10 top players. Uh, and, you losing out on that customer uh, is there's only a certain size of addressable market and you're losing potential revenue, right? So if you look at the lifetime value of your customer and you look at the overall addressable market, just because the cost of acquisition may be higher on Google ads than organic, right? Meaning organic is a more profitable way for you to scale. You may be losing out on customers that might have been slim margins or even losing money on that customer if you can afford to do that to basically eliminate your competition, you're going to win out in the long run, right? We, we talk about Amazon. I feel like every podcast we use Amazon. I love Amazon. Yep. Keep talking about it. But, but <laughs> Amazon is the exact, the, the exact business model. That's what they're talking about is that we can outspend you, right? We're going Correct. to spend more money for a longer period of time to acquire more customers so that we can win in the long run. I mean, how many years were they you know, not profitable? Uh, right. because they are literally willing to spend a thousand dollars to sell you a ten dollar toaster Correct. because they know that acquiring you as a customer will pay back maybe five years from now but it's going to pay back uh, and so if you're in a model where it is a some sort of recurring business um, you're you know a manufacturer that you run you know large run uh, large scale manufacturers that they're gonna you know, do business with you every month or every year for 10 years uh, then yeah, you might lose money initially that you spend a little bit more money than you'd like to, to acquire that customer. But what's the alternative, right? Uh, how, you know, you, these are people that are literally raising their hand, asking to do business with you. Uh, and you're talking about the idea of, you know, now you're going to what cold call people, you're going to go to trade shows. How else are you going to get in front of that type of audience that's ready to buy? So I think you'd be willing to pay a little bit more than that. So I wouldn't just look at that either in terms of, okay, well, my cost per lead is cheaper this way, or my cost per acquisition is cheaper this way. The question is, well, are we still growing, right? It might be slimmer margins, it might cost me a little bit more, but is it adding to the top line revenue? Then I, I probably still wanna do that for a number of different reasons. And then the other thing with paid ads that people don't think about too is the brand awareness, right? I think it's probably better when people don't click on your ads, right? Because if you think about what's happening in that sense, if like you have your bids set up so that you're going to get that impression share and you're at the top of the results, um, let's assume that, you know, someone is in the market for our services, right? They're searching for B2B, you know, marketing consultants. They go to Google, they search. Uh, they don't, they see our ad, but they don't click on it. That's a free you know, billboard that we just put in front of our target audience at the moment of truth is free advertising that we didn't have to pay for. So whenever you look at it and say, okay, well, it's, you know, $50 a click or hundred dollars a click. Um, I mean, look at your impressions, look at the leads that you actually got from that. Look at how many people were actively, you know, searching for some sort of intent that was matched up with what you agreed. Like if someone searches for this, I'm willing to pay $50 for them to click on it. And look at how many of those people actually saw your ad. Uh, and I think continuing to do that, building those impressions across multiple platforms is how you kind of build that brand awareness, right? They, someone does a search, they see your ad and they see you in their organic results and they see you in the uh, maps. Maybe they look at your uh, you know, social profiles and then maybe they see a, a remarketing ad or a display ad. Uh, you know, later because they have been actively searching and visited one of your web properties. Um, yeah, you know, they didn't click on your Google ad, but I think it's worth it to be there because now they've already seen you four, five, six times by the time they're, you know, ready to reach out. Yeah, there's just two things, right? The one thing that really stood to mind uh, is what you said. If I can acquire a customer through paid channel at this dollar amount, you know, for every new client, even though I'm organically number one, why would I stop that? I mean, yeah. you ask any venture capital guy, should I stop that? He's going to say no, because it works. Besides, yes. we don't know how many people are even scrolling anymore, Taylor. That's my thing. People aren't scrolling. And there's this bias that, oh, it's an ad, so people don't click. Who said that? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> Unless you work in digital marketing, you don't even notice that it's an ad. 
I think there's yeah about what eighteen billion uh, dollars worth of proof yes. that uh, people are clicking on the ads. Exactly, dude. The fact so, that Google is in business is because people yeah. are clicking on the ads. So there I think you go. The, uh, I think the again the common misconception is that it's you can choose, right? So like you said, let's say you you have the analytics set up perfectly, and you know that um, if someone is searching for your main keyword organically, it costs you. Two dollars to acquire that customer, and someone searches for your main keyword, and they click on your paid ad, and it costs you twenty dollars to acquire that lead or that customer. And so you look at that and you say, okay, well, it's going to be cheaper for us to go this route, and we're going to have higher margins. It's not the same customer; those are two different customers, right? Mm-hmm. Because you you are getting people that are clicking on your organic, and you're getting people that are clicking on your paid. So it's not guaranteed that if you stop paying money, they're just going to scroll down and click on your organic, and you're going to get it cheaper, right? Because the only scenario that would make sense is if it's a branded search, someone's searching for your brand, and none of your competitors are searching for your brand name. So that means that the only results they see, the first two results, is your paid and then your organic. Then I think you could make that argument. But any other scenario, not paying for that keyword and or that search term on Google Ads, uh, they're going to leave the door open for somebody else to pay for it and get that customer. That customer was going to click on that uh. result. Correct. Right. They weren't going to scroll down and click on yours. There's right. no data to support that. And the other thing, too, is if you're not diversified yep. and Google does make an algorithm change, which we get a lot of calls saying, I was ranking number one yesterday, but today morning it's it's a crying fest. We don't want to do that, right? You shouldn't put yourself in a situation where all of your business is literally, you know, is waiting for organic to, you know, to get you the business. I would diversify them my ad budget regardless because everything costs money at the end of the day. So you have to say, look, I'm going to spend 15% of my budget on paid and I'm going to measure that and try to optimize it just so that I have, right. You're hedging against the fact that it can go down anytime. Mm -hmm. Google doesn't give you any email notification that they're making an update, a major update. Yep. Yeah. And so one thing I would say, right, because we've been very uh, pro, just keep spending money, right? I I do think you should look at adjusting your budgets uh, if you are ranking well. Um, And the other thing that I think you should do is look at the data. Again, we're very results oriented. So we're and we're big into the, the analytics that you can gain and the insights that you can gain. So the big difference from Google's point of view, uh, between the organic search and the paid search is that organic search is sort of this mystery, right? They don't really tell you, uh, what people clicked on, what people searched for. They'll give you basically averages and and studies to show where you rank on certain search terms or where you're showing up, Uh, but not like they do in the paid search, right? As soon as you start paying for the money, paying for the clicks, they show you the, all the demographics of the people who exactly what they searched, what they clicked on, where they converted, what other pages on your website they looked out. Exactly. So uh, what I would say is let's assume you aren't, ranking well for that keyword or maybe you are ranking well for that keyword and it's generating a lot of traffic awareness maybe even leads and customers but it's costing you a lot uh, or maybe even you're losing money on that do that long enough where you can confidently say this keyword is profitable for us forget about the cost per click just look at the fact if someone searches for this they're turning into customers then use that data to start prioritizing on your organic side, right? So that's where you would start investing more into trying to rank for those organic keywords. And maybe that would be a scenario that if you get up to position one or two and you start to get customers through organic search, now you can lower that ad spend or stop spending money because you were losing money initially, right? Uh, But if all else is equal and you're ma- if you're still profitable, it could still be profitable in some s- scenario where you're getting money, getting traffic from organic and paid. Um, I, I still think you should, it's sort of a necessary evil, right? It's a place that you need to be active uh, is Google ads for your, your services or your products that people are searching uh, and they fit your criteria. Y- you need to show up. And I want to leave with this last thought, which is if you run a paid search campaign, and you know you do a modify broad or a phrase match campaign, you get to see all the very, very you know various searches that people are putting it in in the search query result that you weren't even thinking of for your business, right? It's huge research. You don't have yeah. to spend fifty thousand to find out what people are searching, 
what cities or different variables, different names for your product or service that you didn't yeah. even think that it would be possible. And then you can take that information to increase your organic presence just by testing and using paid as a research tool. Mm. That's an excellent point. Um, Google has come out and said that uh, upwards of, I think it was 15% of right. uh, daily searches are completely unique, meaning right. no one has ever searched them before. So by default, your mm -hmm. SEO strategy is technically outdated because you can really only optimize for keywords that people have already searched for. Yeah, it's in the you, keyword planner because it's right? been searched for. <laughs> when you do the research, it's all based on past behavior, right? And, and we all know past behavior is not necessarily at all indicative of future behavior, right? So uh, with Google Ads, you can still, like you said, adjust your, your match type uh, to basically guarantee that anything close to that uh, you would still show up for. So all the infinite variations of the ways people might search uh, tomorrow, we can guarantee we show up. Whereas organically, you, you can't do that because you really kind of have to focus on a couple of different iterations of that search term. You can't control what that user might search. And it gives you the ability to add more pages, add more content for other various searches that people are doing that you were never thinking about, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of builds your SEO strategy as you're mm -hmm. looking at that information. If you don't look at it, then it's a waste. That, yep. That's valuable information. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So any, all, any all final thoughts? Points. No, I, I think, um, I guess as a main takeaway, right. If you're looking at it in terms of black and white, you know, I rank number one for the search term and I'm paying money for the, to, to show up, to be at the top of the uh, search results on paid. Um, should I stop spending money on paid so that I can just get the traffic organically, uh, and, you know, sit back and relax. Um, I would say at face value, no, uh, you can adjust your spending, you can adjust your strategy, but, um, Again, those are essentially separate customers. So uh, assuming you don't have capacity issues, assuming you are looking to grow and you're looking to increase market share, uh, increase brand awareness, uh, I think it's something that you should you know, maybe even double down on now that you're getting these free leads coming from organic search. Yep. Uh, look at how do you, you know, increase your paid and like you said, use the data from paid to actually inform and to uh, direct your SEO strategy for future campaigns, future keywords, search terms that you're trying to rank for. So um, hopefully that, that makes sense to everybody and, and hopefully that uh, you can start implementing uh, these strategies into your organic and uh, paid search strategies. That's a wrap for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please share this with someone that needs to hear this so we can continue to spread the good word. I wanna make sure that you uh, have questions, comments, uh, leave it, email us, uh, you know where to find us. Uh, oneims.com slash podcast and we will see you next time.